What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the interview. I am joined, as always, every Thursday with Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors. He is in full uniform, so <laughs> no, he is ready to go. I'm ready to go. We're talking week four fantasy football, all of the key injuries that may have happened to your fantasy football teams. Hopefully not, but I'm sure um, some of y'all have ran into some injury trouble because there was a lot of studs that went down this week and a lot of moves to be made on the wire. Welcome back to the channel. Dr. Morse, how are we doing today? We're doing good. In the middle of a busy clinic, but we're going to uh, discuss some uh, fantasy football goodness. Love that. You're prioritizing. You're prioritizing. Just you know, we're trying. We're, uh, patients, patients are important, but we, we have time blocks that we got to stick to. <laughs> Love it. All right. So we're going to jump right into it. And the first name that comes up onto the list is obviously uh, the biggest running back to go down this week. He was a perennial top three pick in every fantasy football draft this summer. Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. He is dealing with a high ankle sprain. And reports came out initially, it was two to six weeks. Now they're saying four to eight weeks. Um, and they're probably leaning towards the latter portion of this. Um, would that be your assessment from what we know right now and your experience dealing with high ankle sprains? Yeah, so a uh, high ankle sprain is where uh, you tear the ligaments uh, that connect the two bones in the, in the bottom part of your leg. So whenever you step down with a high ankle sprain, you're the two bones of your leg want to separate. And obviously, that's very painful. This is not actually in your foot, but it's actually above where your crew cut socks are. So kind of above your ankle. Traditionally, this happens when your foot kind of gets rammed into the turf like this, usually from a load above it. You can, rem if you remember, Tevin Coleman has essentially the same injury and so is in Traquan Smith. These can be in different severities. Um, you can have a mild sprain that is banged up, but takes about two weeks to return. Then you can have a severe one has almost complete tearing of that of those cartilage in between that can take eight weeks. And then you can have uh, severe fracture uh, along with it, which is what OBJ had a couple of years ago, which is why he needed surgery. Tua uh, from Alabama had this, I think it was last year, yeah, um, and, they, and they ended up having, putting guard, what we call wires in there, probably to, to get him ready for the game uh, sooner than later. It was a little aggressive, but it, it worked. Likely, they're going to be smart with him. This is their stud. This is their franchise. They're not really competing this year. I mean, maybe they, they think they are, but I don't think they realistically have a shot. It's not really intelligent to risk a, a game or two uh, and, and suffer further injury or potentially serious injury if you can wait a, a couple more weeks. So I think it'll probably come after the bye. It'll probably be maybe a week 12, I think, is, is after their bye. So uh, he could probably come back in week eight or nine, but I don't think they may, they may just be smart with him. Yeah, uh, as it stands right now, I mean, they're three games into the season. Their bye is in week 11, which is seven more games. And if they're putting them in the four to eight time span for recovery, right, that would be at the latter portion of it. So he would be pretty much fully recovered according to that timetable by the time they return from their bye. For fantasy purposes, that puts you in a little bit of a bind because mm -hmm. you'll miss the next seven games. Obviously, there's a bye. And then if you're in a traditional 12-team league, your playoffs probably start in week 14, right? So you only have them for – week 12, week 13 before the playoffs start. So the way I'm looking at it, I've, seen, I've got a lot of questions about trades, which I do with Saquon. Should I sell him? Should I buy him? Um, I'm not looking to buy him unless the only, the only case in which I look to buy him is if I'm 3-0 and and, you know, I have the luxury of being able to uh, sit on Saquon Barkley, right? I have enough depth. My team is looking really good, and I'm going to be looking like I'm going to make a playoff run regardless of whether or not I, I need depth behind me. So that's really the only circumstance in which I'm like, I'm not re ever really looking to actively trade for injured players. And Saquon's obviously uh, a case in which he's going to be out for a long time. Now, mm -hmm. there is a Patriots wide receiver who initially looked like he might be out for some time, but mm -hmm. all signs are pointing to him uh, suiting up for this week's game. He was dealing with some kind of chest injury. It looked kind of brutal on the field, but he came, he came off. He had neg uh, negative x-rays on the chest. Um, he's already practicing today, so yeah. it seems like there's not much concern for him playing this week, right? Uh, Edelman is uh, a trooper. Um, he landed hard on his ribs. I was watching the game, and I saw him kind of come up and grimace. Yeah. He probably suffered a rib contusion or uh, damage to the cartilage in between the ribs. So each of the ribs has cartilage in, in between it. That's where the nerves run. Right. A very painful injury. Um, it, it particularly hurts when you breathe deep because the – 
uh, cartilage expands when you to accommodate your lung expansion. And when that happens, uh, which happens obviously when you're running and, and heavy, huffy, puffy, and that hurts because you're stretching. But the good news is that he'll probably be able to play. They are playing the, uh, Buffalo this weekend, which is a, you know, it should be a, a decent game. Um, uh, and, and he's really important since they lost Devlin. Uh, Devlin is very integral to their rushing offense, their rushing attack. So I think they're going to have to use different personnel and, uh, between Edelman and Dor- Dorsett, they're really going to have to pick up the, pick up the pieces because the rushing attack just has not been very good. But, but uh, I'm not overly concerned about Edelman. Uh, he probably will play this week without much issues. They'll be good in a couple weeks, 100%. Okay. So this is more like a pain tolerance thing for Edelman? Yeah, this is a pain tolerance. As long as x-rays are negative, uh, this is a pain tolerance thing. Okay, so fire up Edelman in this game. Uh, another wide receiver. If you're watching this, it's Thursday, which means Thursday Night Football happens tonight. Packers versus the Eagles. Now, the Eagles wide receiver core, of course, is pretty banged up. Deshaun Jackson's already been ruled out for the game. Mm-hmm. We have Alshon Jeffrey on the other side who um, came down last week or two weeks ago, whenever it happened, with this calf strain. He missed last week's game, and they're on a short week, so I thought he was going to end up missing this week as well just, you know, just for safety reasons. Why, why push him when it's such a short week and give him an extra 10 days to rest? But all signs point to, uh, towards him going. Uh, the calf strain seems to be behind him. They had him as a full participant in practice on Wednesday as of this recording. So it seems like Alshon uh, should be ready to roll. Any concerns in terms of, you know, him re-injuring it or being held back a little bit in terms of like his effectiveness on the field? So this is one of those where you can't really say, well, I'll have someone say, well, he's not injured because he's not on the injury report. He's definitely still injured. I can promise you that. Calf strains do not heal in 10 days. I don't care who you are or what you do. I don't care if you put PRP in there or stem cell or whatever. It doesn't heal that fast. It just doesn't. He's still banged up. He may be 70%, uh, but they feel he's good enough to be removed from the uh, injury report and allow him to be a full go in, in practice and in game. I think this is more of a we're, we're worried about, you know, kind of giving this season up and we really need you to go. I think it's yeah. I think it's the Eagles' offense more of like where they're at right now at this point, and they're not like where we expected them to be. So like we need all our pieces, many of our pieces on the field as we could possibly get. Yeah, I think it's just like if you can if you can tolerate this, you just we need you. Like uh, last week, it was a good game, but it, it didn't go their way. Right. Uh, Djax really needs surgery. Like he needs hernia, hernia uh, sports hernia surgery, which is at least six weeks out because he's not going to feel right. And we're going to hear this every week. Yeah, he doesn't feel right. He's probably not going to go, or he's going to be 50-50. Uh, so they're kind of going to be without him. You have Arcia Whiteside, who, you know, is, is doing okay. He didn't do anything crazy. Hollins looked pretty good. Aguilar. It's funny. You can't you can't separate Hollins and J.J. Ortega Whiteside when they're on the field. One of them makes a catch, and you don't know which one made yeah. it. They're long lean. They both are the same, like skin color and everything. This is still a monster. I mean, Godart has been dealing with this friggin' calf for like six weeks now. He just re injured it. So, like, yeah. these things don't heal quickly and they re injure easily. So, I would not be surprised if Jeffrey tweaks this and either doesn't finish the game or, uh, you know, it just is, is, is not doing well. Like, like last game, he, he injured it and that was it. You didn't see him the entire game. So, I, this is not someone I would trust tomorrow night. Um, yeah, he's a sit for me. Also, like not even just injury, injury aside, like that Packers pass defense is ferocious. Jair Alexander is oh, he's yeah. quickly yeah. becoming one of the top cornerbacks in the league. And he's someone that could shut down, you know, maybe he's not in the prime of his career yet, but give you a 70% 29 year old Alshon Jeffrey. And I don't think that's really a matchup that Jair Alexander can absolutely shut down. So Aguilar becomes an interesting play again, just because get, he's been getting so much volume with Jeffrey mm-hmm. and Deshaun Jackson sidelined. Um, the slot is probably somewhere they could take a little bit of advantage. Uh, the volume should be there. So Jeffrey is definitely someone to uh, be cautious with. And I probably, if you have other options, I would go that way. Now, mm-hmm. someone, you want to talk about pain tolerance. We got to talk about T.Y. Hilton. This guy, anytime mm-hmm. he ends up on the injury report, he balls out. It doesn't matter. He plays through these injuries and puts up numbers all the time, right? He entered last week's game with this quad injury, put up numbers, and then ended up leaving the game, retweaking the quad. He has not practiced yet um, this week. He did not practice at all as of Wednesday. So uh, that has to be a little bit concerning. Obviously, he's not someone that needs to be practicing in full the entire week to play, but you do want to see him like suit up for at least maybe one full practice before the weekend yeah. or something like that. Like, 
Uh, I don't know the severity of quad injuries. I feel like they're not as uh, – we don't hear about them as often as like hamstrings and calves no. and things like that. But what, can you speak a little bit on, on the quad and how nervous yeah. you are about doing so, for a, a long-term view? Basically two types of injuries for the quad. Mm-hmm. Quad is obviously the top of your, uh, uh, top of your leg, uh, four muscles, hence the term quad. Most common is a strain of the muscle which in the overall heal is great and, and doesn't, isn't overly concerning, but it takes a couple of weeks to heal. The other is a contusion, which is usually a deep bruise to the, uh, the top part of the quad. Uh, there's three muscles that sit on the top, and then there's one that kind of sits underneath. Mm-hmm. If it's the deep one, which is the one that has a tendency to get bruised, it has a good blood supply and it bleeds like crazy. So uh, you can actually fit probably – 30 to 50 percent of your entire body's blood in one quad in one leg like it, there's that much wow. i've literally drained 150 almost 200 cc's of blood out of a quad because a guy took an elbow to the top of the quad three or four days later and that muscle kept bleeding and it just keeps filling up this space Jeez. and now like one quad is like 30 percent bigger than the other one because this one has all blood in it so these can be painful these can accommodate a lot of fluid uh, usually blood, um, and they re-injure easily if they're not allowed to heal. I mean, he didn't allow it to heal, and that's why he re-injured it. We don't know if this is a strain or a contusion or maybe both. I would err probably he's probably not going to play this week, or if he does play, he's at high risk for re-injury like last week at a monster game, but he, I don't even think he played in the second half. I think he left in the second He did. That's the crazy part about – like even. Um, even when he comes into the games like limited or less than 100%, he still performs. Um, there's a tweet from Inside Injuries today. It's a T.Y. Hilton is not practicing. He left Sunday's game after re-aggravating his quad injury. And now our algorithm, I don't know what their algorithm does, but it says he needs four weeks for it to heal. Doesn't mean he will miss that much time, but he won't be right. yeah. until around week seven. My, my thing is just like 99% of players, I would be like definitely err on the side of caution. But T.Y. Hilton has just proven time and time again that the guy is just going to produce when he's injured. Like, are you, are you okay? Say he does suit up and he's playing this week. Is this too soon to actually be optimistic about T.Y. Hilton? Or is he just proven too much that, like, he's got to be in your lineup? I, I, think, he, I think he earned a spot. I would, I would lower my expectations for him. Mm-hmm. But there's not many guys that have his upside in this specific offense. Uh, because if it's not him, it's probably going to be Paris Campbell. Yeah. I mean, maybe Ebron, but we don't know what the heck to make of these tight ends. No, nah, so it's going to be like, Campbell, like Zach Pascal, or, you know, it's yeah, like, I mean, Kane, like there's, there's a lot of options, but I don't know if any of them are appealing. None of them are TY. Yeah. I mean, it's tough because in one of my leagues last week, I had to decide between Stefan Diggs, TY Hilton, and Rex Burkhead in my flex. And I actually ended up going with Rex Burkhead. And I, I felt really stupid in the beginning because T.Y. got off to such a hot start. But him and Rex Burke had ended up finishing like half a point between each other. Sure. I'm probably going to have that same decision again this week. If Hilton suits up, like even at 70%, I might take him over Stefan Diggs at Chicago. Like that's such a horrible matchup. Diggs, so it's like, that whole passing offense has been awful. I mean, Thielen did okay last week, but not mm-hmm. like what you'd expect of Thielen. Like you, you drafted Thielen as your number wide receiver one. Yeah, that hurts. If you're lucky, a wide receiver too. But 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 he's not putting up those numbers. They're not throwing. Dalvin Cook is just going ham. Unbelievable. Um, I'm really but, excited to see what he could do against his Bears defense to see, like, you know, who's – it's when a movable object he hits a – whatever the fucking phrase is. You know what I'm talking about. But Cook against his Bears defense is going to be some serious – Oh, I, I, this kid's talented. He just needs to stay healthy, and he's going to be – he's going to be legit this year. For sure. Um, Let's talk about a couple other uh, – why, do you have something else to add to Hilton there? Or? Uh, just This is going to be a, a Sunday morning thing. That's, okay. okay. There, there's no, I can't, we can't predict it before that. All right, so keep a very close eye on the situation. As always, obviously, make sure you're following Dr. Morse on Twitter at Dr. Jesse Morse to stay you know, in contact with what's going on with all of the injuries. You can find them on their Patreon page as well, patreon.com slash the fantasy doctors, where you'll get all of the, you know, the best insight when it comes to all of these injuries that you're getting from actual doctors and real sports medicine doctors that know what they're talking about, right? Because you're not going to be able to find that anywhere else on the internet, the level of depth that they go into with these injuries. So patreon.com slash the fantasy doctors. Also, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you smash that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, we're doing this every single Thursday with Dr. Jesse Morse. Some other wide receivers that popped up on the injury reports today. We have Chris Godwin, mispracticed with a hip injury. Uh, Coach Bruce Arians labeled him day to day. 
for what it's worth. Wednesday injuries, you know, uh, it's really hard to read into it because it's so far away from the game. Sometimes they're just giving these guys a rest. Sometimes they have a very small bruise that they just want to, you know, take safety, take precaution to it. So we don't really know the depth of this. I don't know if you know anything more than I do, just seeing like tweets or reports coming out. But what can you say anything about this? I haven't heard any specifics. I'm not overly concerned about a Wednesday injury, especially if they deemed it precautionary. Right. The two major hip injuries that come to mind uh, that are considered minor are a hip pointer. That's the most minor. And then what we call a hip flexor, which is ones on the back part of your hip, ones on the front. The hip pointer is mild. That's what T Tyrell had. That's what OBJ had the past couple of weeks. Both are usually play, not a big deal. If it's a, uh, a hip flexor, that's a different story. These have a tendency to linger and you almost treat them like a groin injury. Uh, so until we know more, if he practices the next two days, I'm not worried. I have a lot of Godwin, so I will be very – I'll be monitoring this closely. You saw what Evans did last week. So, I mean, dude, dude, smash button was, like, legit. But, um, I mean, I still think Godwin can can be a strong uh, force in this offense. And, and maybe maybe we saw a little bit of a resurgence from, from Howard. Yeah, I think uh, – I mean, they're playing at L.A., which is an extremely tough matchup for these pass, these passing games. But you'd have to assume that Aqib Tlaib locks on to – Mike Evans giving Godwin the easier matchup. So if he's healthy and he's going, you know, and he practices the next couple of days, I would actually have Godwin. I was doing my rankings this morning. I have Godwin ranked ahead of Mike Evans um, for this week, just for the fact that Evans has such a tough matchup. And Godwin's a guy who's been great. I mean, he obviously had his dud game last week, but it was coming off of two big weeks. Keenan Allen is the only guy in the NFL with more 20 yard receptions than Chris Godwin right now. So he's been a big part of that passing offense. And I expect that to be the same as long as he's healthy. So obviously another situation to monitor. Second guy who popped up on the injury report uh, right before we got on the call was Amari Cooper. Now he received a precautionary MRI on his ankle on Wednesday. Now we had talked about this for a second, right before we hopped on the video you know, it's the opposite ankle than the whole foot thing and plantar fasciitis he was dealing with in the preseason. But you also said, like, you don't just get MRIs for no reason. So they say precautionary. You know, what do you make of that? Um, the issue we've always had with Amari is that he hasn't been consistent, but he's proved consistent, at least over the past couple of weeks. And then for the most part, his time in Dallas, he came into the season with some chronic, chronic plantar fasciitis of the left foot, uh, which is a very painful issue, but it, but he was able to control it and, and, and maintain it, and he's done really well. Now we hear about a right ankle uh, issue that they they call precautionary. Whether he rolled his ankle, whether he's dealing with some pain, it's hard let to me, tell. But you don't just let randomly me ask you this real quick. Body uh, parts. Do you, would people who get a, a very minor, like you know, mild ankle sprains, a lot of you could play through usually the next week. Do those people who don't have to sit out any games get MRIs on their ankle? Pros sometimes, uh, you and I know. Okay, so this could – so like say Joe Mixon, right, rolled his ankle, ended up playing the following week. He probably got an MRI after that game. Yeah. You know, precaution. Yeah, he got an MRI. No doubt yeah. in my mind he got an MRI. Okay, so I mean this – I mean it's obviously something to monitor, but this could actually be extremely precautionary and not really mean anything, right? Yeah, I mean these guys are worth, you know, tons of millions of dollars. So it's like what's a $500 MRI that's non-invasive. So it's like you have it available to you. They freaking probably have one at their complex. Yeah. Uh, so it's like not overly a big deal. But, I was wondering um, that, like if they have it at their complex, do they have to report that he got an MRI on his ankle? In their medical records they do. They don't have to tell the public anything. I'm surprised. Like, I, yeah, I was wondering about that. Like why even come out and say that he got an MRI on his ankle? Why not just like list him as, as on the injury? Well, because they were probably trying to – they were probably trying to track him down and saw that he wasn't available and they're probably probing and somebody said, okay, it's kind of a catch 22. They're trying to be up front, but then that leads to further questions. So it's like, that's why a lot of teams don't say anything. And there's a lot of medical stuff that you never know happened. Yeah. Um, and you'll never find out that happened. Uh, and then some of it, uh, you find out happens and it ends up being nothing or it ends up being something. I mean, we found out LeSean McCoy had an MRI last week he ended up playing and it looks like he re-aggravated his ankle, you know, but, uh, we don't know what happened with Damien Williams. Like, did he yeah. get one? I don't know. Yeah. He's, uh, still, not, he's, he's still not practicing yet. So that's he, a little concerning. It, sometimes they tell you and it's like, Oh, that's helpful. And then sometimes they, they don't tell you and like, well, you think they did, you're assuming they did. Yeah. Uh, the guys have, you know, resources. When I was working with uh, some of the pro teams, uh, baseball a couple of years ago, these guys would have, 
the radiologists come in from home to do an MRI on a Sunday when they were closed. Like these guys get whatever the heck they want. Like there's, it, that's just the way it works. Uh, so there's no, there's nothing out of the ordinary that I would expect from a pro team. It's just, that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious about how that stuff works behind the scenes. Now you mentioned LaShawn McCoy with the ankle, Damian Williams. <coughs> My concern with him is just, he didn't even get a limited practice in last week, not one limited practice. So you knew he was far away from playing this week. He's still yet to suit up. So it seems like, I mean, he could be out, you know, another week, another two weeks. We have no idea at this point. Shady retweaks his ankle. Um, do you know anything about like him retweaking his ankle? Do you know if it's, yeah, is there anything behind the scenes there? Going I haven't on? seen any. Uh, so usually Wednesday is when they start giving new updates and I haven't seen any. I've been swamped at clinic today. Um, I haven't seen any updates, uh, good or bad, unless they have a Wednesday game, Thursday game, which uh, they don't, obviously. So usually you don't hear stuff until the end of the week. My suspicion is Williams will be out again. McCoy will be 50-50 or held him out this this week in, in light of how effective uh, Durrell was and how uh, and they still have Thompson there. So, but it remains to be seen details. I mean, obviously the fact that McCoy's MRI was negative doesn't necessarily mean that he's pain free because. Right. He obviously he left. So I mean, Saquon Barkley's ankle comes back negative too, right? Yeah, that doesn't mean, and that just means that there's negative for fractures or negative for exactly. major ligament tears. I mean, exactly. it's it's negative to the public, but that trust me, that is not negative. There's a lot of stuff on there that's very telling. They're just saying there's negative for major stuff that 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 doesn't need surgery or it isn't going to keep them out for several weeks. Uh, but there's stuff on there that's telling to tell you, all right, you can play through this or. You can try to play through this, but you're probably going to re-injure it, which is what happened. Okay, I got you. Let's move over to another uh, running back by committee that seems like it was about to happen in Seattle, um, but then Rashad Penny ended up tweaking his hamstring on a Friday practice. So he, it seems like if he were even to suit up in this week for this Sunday's game, he'd still be a little bit within that time frame of, of needing to heal. Now Carson keeps fumbling the ball away, and it looked like he was almost about to fumble that job away until Penny gets hurt, right? Because the game right before that, he fumbles, Penny comes in, looks really good, starts making big plays, tweaks his hamstring in practice, and now it's like he's probably going to be sidelined again for week four. We don't really know, you know, his involvement in practice yet, but this seems like he's probably 50-50 at best to play this week, right? Yeah, no, if you have a, a, a worst-case scenario for an injury that's not season-ending is a hamstring injury on a Friday before a Sunday game. You hate to see it. Like, there's literally almost a, like, 0% chance they're rolling the dice with them. Uh, even if it's a cramp, which can happen, probably still not playing. This has only been less than a week, um, so obviously it's not healed. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd be surprised if he played this week. And it's just – it's unfortunate. Like, he has the chance to seize the job, and I have him in a ton of best ball leagues in Penny just because of cost, but – uh, he's probably going to be out another week or two. And it, Carson needs to figure out this fumbling. I mean, and they're doing more punching than fumbling, but yeah. Still. Yeah. So it seems like an issue. Uh, Rashad Penny, probably not going to be back this week. So I would not rely on him. Another guy is definitely not going to be back this week. Cam Newton. Now he was ruled out immediately on Monday. And I was like, okay, there's something obviously serious going on. If you rule him out that quickly, Kyle Allen comes in, takes over as a starting quarterback, goes for four touchdowns, albeit it was against the Arizona Cardinals pass defense, which literally donates passing touchdowns to opposing quarterbacks. But Cam Newton has his Liz Frank foot injury. Mm -hmm. This seems like something that could absolutely just finish his season. Do you think Cam Newton comes back and is the Panthers starting quarterback at any point this year? There's a chance he could be back by week eight, somewhere around there. Okay. His foot is what we call unstable, meaning when he – puts his foot down and the bones and the ligaments start to move this way, they're going to have to put a screw in that there. He needs surgery and it's done for the year. Is that what happened to Greg Olson? Yeah. Well, his is a little different. This is actually the same surgery that Hollywood Brown had. Right. Uh, Greg Olson had a fracture of the fifth, which is a Jones. Yeah. I remember them putting the, uh, the screw in during yeah. all or nothing that Amazon. Yeah. Show. That's, that's a, a fifth, a fracture of the fifth in the foot. Uh, this is a uh, ligament tear of the first and second as it runs across the middle of the foot. Okay. Very important. Uh, you can't stand without the, the Liz Frank complex. It's you, 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 you can't even do anything. That's why he was so useless. Okay. Do so you think he'll be back though? I'm on the fence. 50, 50. I mean, if he doesn't, if he goes three or four weeks and is like, I can't, I just can't get back. Like I, it, it's not healing like I want it to. 
either they do a little PRP stem cell uh, in there, or they say, no, let's just do surgery and, and, and let Allen be the QB the rest of the year. Um, so it's, it's hard to tell. We'll have to see. It's kind of like Tyreek, like you expect him to come back, but I personally wouldn't be surprised if they, someone told me that Tyreek Hill was done for the year. Like everybody thinks he's coming back in a couple of weeks, but some of these injuries you try to get back and they just don't heal like you want them to. And then it's like, uh, all right, I'm going to shut it down and treat it surgically. Yeah, well, I hope you all picked up uh, Kyle Allen in, in those super flex leagues, man. The kid looks like he could be a player. He was someone that produced really highly uh, in college at a very early age, and he's done nothing but play well in the NFL thus far into his career. So very concerning news for Cam Newton, obviously. Mm -hmm. Vance McDonald seemed like this was going to be concerning, right? He injures his shoulder, apparently, and then they go out and trade their fifth-round pick for Nick Vanette, uh, the Seahawks tight end. So now they're without their first, third, and fifth round pick, I believe, in 2020. So they trade for this tight end, and then they immediately say it won't be an extended absence. And uh, Coach Mike Tomlin is optimistic that he's going to be playing in week four. It I, like, doesn't fucking make sense to me. Like, Why would you go out and trade for a tight end if you're optimistic that he's going to play and this is not a long-term like injury here? Maybe they're not happy with how effective he was while he was on the field. Yes, uh, like, you know, like last year we saw we saw him be be effective in a limited role with Jesse James there. Now Jesse James is in Detroit, yeah. uh, and McDonald is the is the clear cut number one, but he really hasn't done much. And everybody thought he was like a top eight tight end. Uh, this is an AC joint sprain, which is the top of your shoulder here. These can range from mild grade ones, which are uh, realistically he could come back this week, to a grade three. I mean, they go up to five, but grade three. Uh, and, and some of these require surgery. It is kind of a, uh, a debate whether or not surgery is needed. So it really depends on where he's at, how severe this is, and how much pain he's in. If he can't do this, then what good is he? You know, like you, you're not going to do this the entire time because you, you know, so this is the range of motion that the AC joint does and reaching across. And if he can't do that because the AC joint is just super inflamed and painful, he's not going to be able to do it. Uh, so that's part of the issue is that they're going to, they have to play this day to day. This could be a week. This could be three, four weeks. Okay. So yeah, we're going to have to keep our eye on that. Obviously make sure you got a backup plan because Vance plays on Monday night. So that puts you in a tricky situation. If we don't know more, if they're just going to keep coming out with reports saying they're optimistic, but he's not getting in, you know, limited or full practices or whatever, you might just have to throw in a lesser option um, at your tight end spot on, on Sunday. Because again, he plays Monday night. You don't want to put yourself in a position where, you're it's either Vance McDonald or you're getting a zero. You never want to do that. And it's not like Vance is good enough where, you know, it's worth holding out there. So make sure you got a backup. If you are a Vance McDonald owner, that is all the injuries we have on the list today. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button again. If you enjoy the video, make sure you're following Dr. Morse on Twitter at Dr. Jesse Morse and make sure you go subscribe to their Patreon, patreon.com slash the fancy doctors, where you're getting the most in-depth exclusive content about all the injuries around the NFL in breaking fashion. They are the best to do it over there. I promise you that no one's doing it better. And that is where you can go support them. Subscribe to the channel. If you're new, we'll see you next Thursday. Adios doc. Take care.